Hey, hey, everybody, coming back at you with another card of the day, number 312. We've been doing this 312 days live in a row. Just wanted to come on and uh, knock out the Grifter from uh, Wildcats, which is now a DC property. So, thought that would be cool. Give me just a second to uh, share with the page so everybody can see, and then we're going to get this underway. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit different today. It's going to be a fun one. Because I'm going to grayscale all of this except for the mask. I thought that would be a neat approach and uh, thought it would be really cool. Javier, Sonia, thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate that. Um, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm just going to take this a little bit different uh, approach this time because it's going to be uh, rather interesting. I'm going to start with different grayscales here and uh, see about knocking this out. And... I'll start this flesh tone here for this ear with a little bit of warm color. And I'm using Copics today, so everybody will get to see those in, in progress and uh, work from there. I think I'm going to go with, uh, I don't want to go that dark. Let's see if I can grab a, uh, yeah, neutral four. That'll work. But it's going to be an interesting, like I said, it's going to be a really cool, interesting approach, I hope. Because what I'm going to be doing is doing grayscale for this one. And then the, the red mask. Because I wanted to do something a little bit different. And um, a little bit riskier than I normally do. And I know I'm using this in four on the tails here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over them with a darker red thereafter. And I'm going to have that in the background. Because... The ties that he actually uses for the mask go through here, and they don't come up quite the same anymore. They have a gray undertone, the, like the fabric that's underneath the mask that he has, and they come in right here. It's like seamed into the mask, and then the front is red. So that's the reason I wanted to do that, and I've got a maroon over here that I'm going to use for that. I'm moving off scene like you guys can see that. <laughs> moving out of panel. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it's going to be really cool. I'm going to go in here with this neutral on the glove here because I want it to have a different texture than the jacket. So I'm going to go with that one. Yeah, that looks really cool. Because he has red gloves as well, but I wanted to mute it out because I want to do this card specifically as uh, highlighting just that one pop of red right there on the mask. I know everybody's going to be after me about that. Why didn't you do the glove too? <laughs> There's a reason for the madness. It's artistic expression here. I just wanted to make this one, like I said, totally different than what I've been doing all along. And uh, go a different route. Make it a little more unique. Because this isn't actually grayscaling. It's, it's called spot coloring. And uh, a lot of comic artists are doing it specifically comic artists, are doing it more and more now uh, thanks to things like Frank Miller's run on uh, Sin City, you know, with his book, uh, The Yellow, The Yellow Book. That was a really cool piece. Um, <clears throat> it just depends, you know. There's a lot going on with it. But uh, let's see, I'm going to put that over here. So I'm keep these straight. I'm going to go with this jacket. I think I'm going to go with the Kevlar armor first because I want this to be a little cooler look, a little lighter. Get that going across there. Oops, nick the jacket. That's going to be darker anyway, so it won't matter. But see, live, live, live. That's how we're doing this. But because this is a lighter color on the ja than the jacket, it'll be fine. I'm not worried about that. And accidents do happen. Rarely, but they do. Nonetheless. So, and I think I'm going to go super light here. Um, I have a really cool... This BV-23, which has a really nice, cool look to it. I'm going to go light with this one and go with the gun with this uh, 
blue violet, which is actually a, another color, but it'll work because it's in the gray scale. And it'll give it just a little bit of a um, different hue to it for a metallic look. And it works really well in grayscaling for this stuff, which uh, I've used before on other books for guns and weapons and things like that. You know, it's a really cool look, in my opinion, anyway. Now, I'm going to use this N3, which is just a little bit darker than that, uh, that other cooler color that I used, that C5 for the uh, Kevlar. It'll give us a different shade, different look for the leather jacket, which if I were coloring this, it would be brown. It's got a bright, um, almost a burgundy color. So uh, it's really, really cool because his jacket is a shade of red rather than brown, but whatever works. Come in here and just don't want to hit that mask. Okay. And whenever you're using Copics across ink, be careful not to go forward with it because you'll tear your brush up. Use the nibs a little bit differently and pull back on them. And rotate your brush as you go along, and it'll help save the tips. It'll save a lot of wear and tear on them. A lot. Okay. Darken that up just a little. Cool deal. Now, when this dries, it'll dry all the different shares, the shared layers and all that will dry up differently and all the colors will pop off now what i'm going to do next is i need one that's super light for the hair here because <clears throat> he is a blonde i don't need the wedge tip this one's one of my favorites check this out i'm gonna have to go back and do that that forehead line too but i like using these because they don't tend to bleed a lot because that mistake down there on the edge of the jacket was my fault. Um, it had nothing to do with the marker. <clears throat> I didn't pull it up high enough and I hit over the line. Leave it to me to color outside the lines. <laughs> what are you doing coloring outside the lines? Why? Because it's creative. Why would you do that? I don't know. It was fun at the moment. <laughs> but, all joking aside, these colors work outstandingly well. Okay. And those last two little wedges there. No. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are kicking in. Go down underneath that. I'll go back to this this warm two. Catch the edge of that jaw right there. And then pop that in on this forehead. So we have that those flesh tones colored. And now for the important part. <clears throat> I'm going back to this in four real quick because I missed a knot right there. For his mask brace. Very cool. Now this is a let's see an R27 so it's a little bit brighter red and I wanted it to to maintain against the uh, you know maintain its integrity against the all the grays and really be vibrant and pop so I think we're gonna get that 
think we're gonna get that look. Very cool. Making sure I don't hit any graphite pockets. I erased this very well before I came on, but uh, you never know. You know, you can always catch those funky little pockets of like graphite or whatever or ink. That's always fun. But I inked this yesterday and let it sit and dry to set the ink into the paper here. So we shouldn't have a problem, but you never know. It's always fun to go across a canvas and have a big black smudge. That's fun. It's like, yay. <laughs> so, cool deal. All right. I'm going to darken that up a little bit. Pull back across here. I'm going to go in here <clears throat> and darken up this thumb ridge since I want to cross it. Wash that out a little bit. Cool deal. All right. Now, I am going to grab this really dark in six here which is a neutral six and highlight this thing just a little bit with this little ridge here like I like to do around it and then I'm going to darken this in so we can color this in and get it done Take my brush tip here. I like leaving that little highlight ridge around to divide it. Um, a lot of people don't do that, and I don't do it in the comic books as much as I do on these cards. A lot of people don't like to leave that little highlight. I do to make it stand off the page on these uh, these type of cards, sketch cards, things like that. Uh, just to give it a little character and a little lift, but uh, not much. I don't do it for comic books. I don't like outlining them because of the fact that it takes it breaks the illusion for me. So I don't like to do that very often, unless it's specifically required by an editor here or there or whatever, you know, a client to ask for it. Then I do it. But if I'm doing just my own work, I don't do that. I tend not to. I don't mind it going right up to the edge. A lot of people say, well, it blocks out your line work. Eh, sometimes it can. It can. Just depends on the color that's going up against it. I've decided I want to go just a touch darker on this one for the hair because it's not that nice warm colors showing up. It's there, but it's not as uh, it's not as prominent as I wanted it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with an N2 over that to liven that up. And apparently there's a plane going by. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but I sure did. Airplane. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think this is going to come off all right. It's giving it a little bit of a colder look, but I think it'll hold. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that works all right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Cool deal. Now, I know they did Wildcats. Um, I think they did the Wildcats thing. Sorry, I didn't turn the volume down on my phone. I think they did the Wildcats thing where they did them black and white for a while. But whatever. 
that will work. Let's see, what other color can I use here for the eye tint? I have a C0, which is very, very soft and subtle. Let's see if I can get that going. Yeah, that works. Cool deal. All right. Now I'm going to come in with a T4 here. And I'm going to see about tinting down some of this Kevlar just a little bit. Give it a little more of a pop. And then I'm going to call it done. Just going to cut that in very simple, clean, like that. And I don't want to do too much here, so I want to leave this a little more raw. But I'm going to color in just the underside of this hair to make it jump out here a little bit. But like I said, I don't want to have to go in and tone everything, so I'm not going to go overkill with it. There we go. Cool. I like that. It works. It works. Let's see. Okay. Being very careful here because I don't want to bleed this out. Because this one, it's a T4 and it's fully loaded. And it has uh, a heavy effect on it. I don't want it to run all over the place here. Cool deal. Alright, so with that said, we have the grifter. But like I said, though, I think I'm going to tone uh, this one down just a little bit uh, on the mask. I, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and tone it out a little bit so we can get a little more into it. And then I'm going to call it quits so I don't overwork it like I tend to do. I like these things and I can add, I don't know, 20 or 30 shades to them and I don't need to do that. Not for this particular card anyway. Okay, put that under the eyes there. Accent that brow. I do this with my Spider-Man pictures too and uh, my Deadpool stuff. I, I really dig adding the textures from the shading because Copics are really cool with that. If you're in new to them, um, do test pieces, you know. I would make prints of the original artwork and not necessarily go at them like I'm doing, which is straight to the, to the canvas. But if you wanted to, you could, you know what I mean? You definitely jump on there and uh, knock some of it out. So, could definitely go that route. And we have that going on now. There we go. Cool deal. Not going to mess with it anymore because, I, like I said, I don't have to tone the whole thing. Anyway, hope that's cool. Hope you guys dig it. Uh, we have the Grifter from Wildcats, now owned by Wildstorm Division of DC Comics. And uh, I don't know what's coming up tomorrow. I have a couple of options here that I'm thinking about uh, to see where we're at. But like I said, this is episode 312. I've been doing this for 312 days straight without missing a single day. And hopefully we'll be able to keep it going on until the, uh, the stack's finished. And uh, got some new stuff coming up for you too uh, pretty quick. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great one. As you know, the rule of thumb is we inherited this rock in a certain way. And we live here right now. Leave it for a better place tomorrow for the next generation. Talk to you later.